what happens when we begin to realize that the 200-year experiment we've called the American healthcare system has failed. Tune in to Awakened Wellness with Milen Riobe, MD, and join the conversation about how to heal our broken system to reverse our current health crisis. The entire world is looking for answers, and the truth is hidden in plain sight. Learn how spirituality, ancient traditions, and cutting-edge science are merging to create a new paradigm of wellness every Wednesday at 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. Eastern Time with live video shows every first and third Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time when you can call in and ask the questions that matter most to you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dream Vision 7 Radio. I am your host today, Dr. Milena Reobe. Our number, before I forget to give it out, is area code 646-558-8656. Again, we're live here on Dream Vision 7 Radio, and you're listening to Awakened Wellness with Dr. Milena Reobe. And uh, today, we're going to go through the five questions to fix fatigue for good. Um, So this is kind of a little bit of a um, an unveiling of what our online course is. So you're going to want to have a pen and pad ready because we're going to be going through these questions. We're going to help you figure out your metabolic type today and uh, give you some understanding of what your metabolic type actually means in terms of why you're tired and how to fix it. So it's a just a very kind of quick overview of what we're going to dive very deeply into with our online course Uh, the Wellness Warrior nine-week transformation program. So we're going to go through today what we're going to do over the course of nine weeks with live lessons. We're going to have worksheets and we're going to have PowerPoint uh, slides uh, to review and we're going to have live lessons. So uh, this is just a skeleton. But how I came to these five questions um, was basically COVID. You know, when COVID hit, um, I had to figure out a way to assess my clients long distance um, and still unveil an entire treatment plan for them without ever having seen them or examined them in my office. And uh, what I realized is through the use of Chinese medicine, uh, these are some of the questions that are used to form patterns in Chinese medicine. What I realized is these five questions they're not going to give you a diagnosis like we would do with Chinese medicine, but they will give you this broad overview of why things are happening. And what makes them so empowering is these are things you can do on your own at home through nutrition, through exercise, detoxification, and rest. Um, I call those the four pillars of wellness. Um, and I teach these to my clients all the time. So. Again, I just want to be clear that we are not diagnosing any conditions. I am not giving out any medical advice. There is no assumption of a physician-patient relationship uh, through these five questions and through this uh, podcast today or even on my online course, but uh, it is extremely self-empowering. And uh, as we go through, you'll see why. And um, how how all of this came about was through, you know, 20 some odd years ago when I started practicing medicine, I was very quickly frustrated by the fact that I couldn't help people when they came into the office complaining of fatigue. And fatigue is by far the most common complaint that people have when they go to see the doctor. And so we didn't learn how to deal with this symptom in medical school, which I didn't realize I didn't learn it until I was faced with it in private practice. Um, And so all of a sudden I got hit with all these patients telling me how exhausted and tired they were, and I didn't really quite know what to do for them. Now, we did study some things in medical school about fatigue, so we learned to look for Uh, diseases that might be causing the patient to be tired. So the most common thing would be thyroid disease, right? So we would run blood work. We would make sure you're not anemic. We would make sure you didn't have a thyroid condition. We would make sure you didn't have cancer, diabetes, these types of things. Um, And thankfully, you know, majority of people don't have those things. And so we would send people away and tell them, you know, get more sleep and find some way to reduce the stress in your life and good luck and we'll see you next year. 
Um, and then they would come back next year and no answers the following year either. So this went on and on and on. And so uh, I figured there's no way I can keep practicing medicine this way. It doesn't make any sense. So I went out and I studied traditional Chinese medicine. And again, I was just really shocked at how easily they explained the root causes of fatigue and that it had been something that they had hammered out thousands of years ago um, and that it really hadn't changed uh, in 4,000 years. And so I came back with all this information and started treating patients and had really great success. What I realized after I tried to blend these two very different systems of medicine, so I had my mainstream medical background as an OBGYN, and then I went out and I studied traditional Chinese medicine. And when I first learned, you know, one and then the other, they seemed so opposed to each other that it was actually really hard to learn Chinese medicine. Um, I, I was really challenged. Um, and so I had to one day decide, I'm just going to actually try and forget everything I know about medicine and just let these, this information sink in because it really just, it did not make any sense to me based on what I had learned in medical school. So somehow I managed to empty my skull of all the data that I had amassed over 13 years. And I just sat and I listened um, with what Chinese medicine calls beginner's mind. And all of a sudden, light bulbs started going off because I started to realize that Chinese medicine was actually explaining a ton of the gaps that were left uh, wide open by our conventional mainstream medical model. Um, and so they were not really opposites. Uh, they were very similar. They were just looking at the same thing through very different lenses. Um, and so what happened as I started practicing the two together is there started to develop this hybrid medical system that wasn't completely mainstream and it wasn't completely Chinese medicine. It was some kind of mixture of the two where I could swim in and out of both um, fairly seamlessly and also explain a lot of the, the challenges that we have in our mainstream model. Um, and so there's this kind of hybrid system that I have that I use um, and that's where these five questions came from. I figured out as I asked these five questions, the causes of fatigue become very apparent. The other thing I learned from Chinese medicine that's critical is we dismiss fatigue in allopathic medicine. Like it's just this nuisance, go get more sleep. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, when you retire, you'll be able to get more sleep or go on vacation or whatever. Um, the gap that Chinese medicine fills in there is Chinese medicine actually teaches us that fatigue is a disease. It's not a nuisance symptom. It's an actual disease, and it is a very slippery slope to a bunch of other diseases. Um, the most poignant being cancer. If you look at the patterns that the Chinese describe as the causes, if you will, of cancer. Fatigue is always present. Um, they call it spleen chi deficiency. So they have a pattern that they call spleen chi deficiency. The most important symptom to diagnose someone with spleen chi deficiency pattern is fatigue. That's like the main symptom that describes this pattern. And Spleen sheet deficiency is at the heart of what they call all mysterious or curious diseases. So all complicated looking diseases have fatigue at the core, at the center. And so that really stuck with me. And what I realized is if I can help patients fix their fatigue early, what we're actually doing is not just helping them to feel better, but we're actually preventing other diseases that are caused by fatigue. And the reason fatigue causes other diseases is again, filled in by the Chinese medicine um, information that we get. You know, fatigue is a symptom, a sign that your body does not have enough energy to perform all of its functions. So your body starts to shut stuff down that it doesn't perceive as being critical for your survival. And what your body does is it makes you wanna go lay down because it's telling you, hey, I don't have enough energy to do all this stuff that I need to do, so I need you to slow down, 
so I can at least do the minimum that's required. Because the more you move around, the more energy I have to figure out how to give you and I don't have it. So please go lay down. That's really what fatigue is telling us. And so um, question number one, so write this down if you can, is do I feel hot or cold compared to most other people? And what this question does is it helps categorize you into two different um, uh, camps, if you will. Uh, are you too hot or are you too cold? Um, and I, I warn people, like, don't compare yourself to one person. So I have a lot of clients, they'll compare themselves to their spouse. Um, and I said, well, you don't know where your spouse is in relation to other people. So you have to get this kind of global. When you go out with all your buddies and all your friends, are you the only one with a jacket on when no one else feels you know, cold? Or are you the one always ripping off your jacket when everybody else feels fine? Are you the one battling to turn the thermostat up, up or down, you know, when other people are around you? Not just one other person, but a few other people. Are you the only one in your family that has this issue, right? And so some, most of my female patients will say, yeah, I always feel kind of cold. I always have a jacket on no matter where I go, I feel cold. Um, they'll sometimes say, I know if my temperature goes up to 99 degrees that I have a fever because it starts so low. Or they'll sometimes say, when I go to the doctor, my temperature is always 97 or 96, and that's my normal. Um, it's not normal, it's just where you are. Um, normal is 98.6, so common, does not mean normal, right? So we wanna know where am I compared to what's normal? Am I too cold or am I too hot? You can also confirm that by taking your temperature first thing in the morning. Uh, so when you wake up, if your temperature is 96, you know that you have a cold constitution or a cold metabolic type. If you feel hot all the time, you're always having hot flashes or um, you, know, you just feel hot and thirsty all the time. Your temperature is like 99 and change all the time, even though you don't have an infection, even though you, know, you don't feel sick, but your temperature is always up there. Classically, men tend to be a little bit more hot than women, uh, but that's not always the case. So the first question is to figure out, are you too hot or too cold? You know, and that's going to help you to sort through your metabolic type. In Chinese medicine, it's one of the very important questions that we ask because whether something is too hot or too cold is going to determine how it's treated. Um, and so that's question number one. So go ahead and rate yourself if you know if you're too hot or too cold. Question number two is how do I rate my own energy level in the morning when I first wake up on a scale of one to ten? So on a scale of one to 10, what's your energy level when you first wake up in the morning? One is I'm so exhausted. I don't even get out of bed. I can't. Uh, 10 is I can bounce out of bed and do whatever I want. I'm perfect in the morning, right? So write that number down. You know, how do I rate my energy on a scale of one to 10 when I get up in the morning? What does that tell us, right? So that tells us where your baseline energy is after you've rested. Right. So if after you've rested, you're still tired in the morning, that tells us something, right? That tells us that you're not getting restful sleep or that you're so deficient that you're not able to restore yourself even with sleep. Now, if you bounce out of bed and you're at 10, that tells us a couple things too, right? That tells us everything's perfect and you know you have nothing to worry about, or it tells us you have too much energy, maybe which we'll figure out with the next questions, right? So just rate yourself right now on a scale of one to 10. This is my energy in the morning when I wake up, right? And on an average day, right? Don't, don't rate a day when you had, you know, an unusual night, you know, where you didn't sleep or, you know, something kept you up or whatever. You, know, you want an average morning. Um, and then some people will say, well, should I rate myself on a day that I have to get up to go to work, or should I rate myself on a day when I can get up whenever I want? You know, I would say if you work and you have to get up at a specific time, that's the best time to gauge your energy, right? Um, if you don't work, then what's the time that you would normally want to get up? You know, so if you're the type of person that wants to be a morning person, you want to get up at seven, and if you force yourself to get up at seven, what is that energy level that you feel? So write that down. 
And again, in our course, we're going to dive really deep into these questions. So I'm just giving you a very quick overview today, um, but we're going to dive super deep into these questions. So you have a really thorough understanding of why they're important to ask yourself periodically and then what it means in terms of what you do throughout the day to help yourself to get out of burnout situations or to prevent burnout, you know, if you're not quite there yet, right? So that's question number two. Question number three, does this number that you just rated yourself on a scale of one to 10 go up or down as you move through your day? Um, and that's an important thing that people don't often think about but it tells you a lot, right? So if you started out as a five in the morning and when you move around, that five keeps dropping all day to the point where you want to go and take a nap, you know, at one or two o'clock in the afternoon, that says something, right? That says that you are deficient. So as you move around in your day, as you do things, you're using up energy that you can't keep up with or that you can't replace. And so you are in a deficiency state, right? And so you combine that with question, the answer from question number one, whether you were hot or cold. So now you'll know, am I a hot deficient metabolic type or am I a hot excessive metabolic type? You'll also know if you rated yourself as cold, am I now a cold deficient type? or am I a cold excessive type? Now, if your energy level goes up, you get up and you move around and you actually feel better, that's telling us that you have stuck energy. And so you're tired because your energy is not moving. And if you move, if you force yourself to move, you feel better. That tells us that there's too much energy laying around, you know, it, it's stuck. So you may have infl excessive inflammation. You may have poor circulation that you have to force blood circulation through your body through movement. That says that you are an excessive metabolic type. There's extra stuff that you need to force to move around to feel better because it's kind of like junk that's in the way. So it could be inflammation. It could be toxins. It could be heavy metals. Uh, it could be plaque. It could be little blood clots that are forming in the tissues of your body. It could be remnants of viruses and parasites and bacteria. It's just extra stuff that's not supposed to be there that's in your way. So for question number three, does my energy go up or down after I move through my day? If your energy goes up as you're moving around, that says you have excessive stuck energy. So you are an excess metabolic type. So if you go back to question number one, you figured out if you were hot or cold. Now, if you know yourself to be an excessive metabolic type based on the question you just answered, so now you'll know if you're a hot excessive or a cold excessive. And that's important, right? And we'll talk about the metabolic types later. There's, there are essentially four of them. So question number three, does that, does that number go up or down? You want to know does it go up or down? Ask yourself, okay, so I get up and I'm a five and I eat my breakfast, I have my coffee, and then I start moving around. Does the five go up to a seven? Does it go up to a nine? Or do I not really feel any better? And it just kind of is sluggish and then it starts to drop off. You know, so now you know, if it starts to drop off, you are deficient. If it starts to go up, you are excessive. So just write that down. And write that number down as well. I went from a five to a seven, or I went from a three to a nine, or I went from a nine to a two, right? You know, if you went from a nine to a two, now you're, you're deficient metabolic type, right? And so now you kind of know your metabolic type uh, to, to a pretty good degree. Now, question number four helps us to really kind of hammer the types. So if you go and you do exercise, if you go to the gym and you work out or you do a power walk, you swim, you ride your bike, does that make you feel better or does that make you feel worse? Um, you know, so does your energy level go up in response to exercise or does it go down in response to exercise? And you may not feel the effect of exercise immediately that day. It may be yeah, when I work out and I wake up the following morning, I feel like I get hit by a truck, right? That's telling you that your exercise is dropping your energy. 
You know, so if you feel way more tired the following morning after you've exercised, or if you feel really tired after you've exercised, you're like, yeah, if I work out, I have to go take a nap. I feel awful the rest of the day, or I can't focus, or or you might say, I have to exercise at night and really force my way through because when I'm done, I just have to go to bed because I'm tired. That's telling you you are deficient. That's confirming that you are deficient metabolic type. And again, if you were hot or cold for question number one, now you know, okay, I'm a hot deficient or I'm a cold deficient. Um, if your exercise makes you feel better, I'll have patients to say, yeah, I don't feel good unless I exercise. Um, that's telling you, again, there's some stuff in the way. Your energy is stuck. You're not tired because you don't have enough energy. You're tired because you can't get the energy to move to where it needs to go because it's stuck. It's stagnant. That's different. And that's an excessive metabolic type. Again, you have stuff in the way that's not supposed to be there. You have inflammation. You have, uh, you know, perhaps blood clotting, you know, in, in the smallest tissues of the body. You have, uh, you know, pathogens like virus remnants or parasites, bacteria, things like that that are in the way. That's different. That's excessive. That's stuff that's not supposed to be there. That's there. And you have to force it to move to feel better. You have to move it out of the way to feel better um, by exercising, by moving, by forcing it to move. That's an excessive metabolic type, right? So question number four, does exercise make me feel better or worse? If the answer is I feel better, that's confirming an excessive metabolic type. If the answer is I feel worse, that's confirming a deficient metabolic type. Okay. So that's question four. Question five, uh, again, this, these are confirmatory questions. So do I feel achy and tired if I sit for more than an hour? Uh, so, you know, it's middle of the day, for example, let's say it's two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm at my desk and I'm trying to work. If I have to sit there and work for an hour, do I feel really super achy and tired? Am I falling asleep at my desk at two o'clock in the afternoon? Um, you know, if I'm sitting still. Now that tells you if, if you're really tired and you have to get up and move around to feel better. You know, yeah, I have to get up and I have to walk around. I have to do jumping jacks so, you know, so I can keep moving. Then I feel better. That's again, confirming that you have an excessive metabolic type. Okay, now you could have a deficient metabolic type and be falling asleep at your desk, but that's because your energy was already on its way down, right? Uh, and so again, in our online course, we hammer that out to make sure you know exactly how to answer these questions. So if your energy was already going down and you sat down at your desk and now it just plummeted, that's a deficient type. If you were feeling fine and moving around made you feel better and all of a sudden you stayed still and now all of a sudden you feel poorly, that's an excessive metabolic type, okay? So that's question number five. And again, we hammer through all these questions in our online course. You have opportunities to ask all the questions you need to really hammer them, hammer them down. We have worksheets and we have slides, illustrations to really help you to figure out what's your metabolic type. But it's pretty easy, as you can see, to hammer it out, right? So uh, time for our first commercial break. Uh, so I hope you got all those five. You can always re-watch the podcast. Um, you know, it'll be uh, airing again uh, to really work through these questions if you need to. Uh, so when we come back from this commercial break, we're going to talk about the four metabolic types, see which one you fit into and what that means for your diet, your exercise, your detoxification, and your sleep and rest. So you're listening to Awaken Wellness. I'm your host, Dr. Milan Reobe, and we'll be right back after this break. What happens when we begin to realize that the 200-year experiment we've called the American healthcare system has failed? Learn how spirituality, ancient traditions, and cutting-edge science are merging to create a new paradigm of wellness on Awakened Wellness with Milen Riobe, MD. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. Eastern Time with live video shows every first and third Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern when you can call in and ask Dr. Milin the questions that matter most to you. Dr. Milin is the medical director of the Rio Bay Institute of Integrative Medicine in Jupiter, Florida. 
For more information, visit RIOBEintegrativemedicine.com. Dream Vision 7 Radio Network invites you in for this dynamic, forward thinking show. Join Dr. Bernie Siegel on Mind Health Matters every Thursday and Friday, 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. Eastern Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Bernie will draw from his inspirational personal journey, offering us special nuggets of his sacred wisdom weaved through his delightful stories. Listen in as Bernie reminds us to be fully engaged in life. Ever wonder what it's like to have your own radio show? Well, wonder no longer, because you can dip into the radio airwaves by being host for the day on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. It's a fabulous way to get your radio feet wet. It's an opportunity to market your business, modality, or book, have a guest, mention a sponsor, and take callers. Or you may want to facilitate a lesson by going solo. It's up to you. Listeners can be online, mobile, in cars with Bluetooth, or listen through Amazon's Echo by asking Alexa, play Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. For more details, go to DreamVision7Radio.com and click on Host for the Day. Omega Institute, offering workshops, retreats, and online learning dedicated to awakening the best in the human spirit. For over 40 years, Omega has seen more than a million people come through its doors to grow, learn, and find a greater sense of purpose. With over 350 workshops to choose from, Omega offers something for everyone. Located in Rhinebeck, New York, just 90 miles north of New York City, Omega's natural environment and quiet pace allow for extraordinary experiences to unfold. Learn more at eomega.org or call 877-944-2002. Again, 877-944-2002. Delight your kids with an enchanting journey by reading the Paper Doll Kids Children's Book by Deborah Bove and Janine Sullivan. There's even a catchy tune, Kids for Love Song, produced by Bob Sherwood and sung by kids just like yours. The story weaves around seven paper dolls flying around the world doing good deeds as they bring important attention to our endangered animal friends. There's even a magical ring with a universal message. Kids become interested in service projects, action through compassion, and planting seeds that nurture positive change. The Paper Doll Kids and Kids for Love Song are a production of the Kids for Love Project. Get the book now on Amazon Kindle and the song on CD Baby or iTunes. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. Thank you, Rachel. Welcome back to Awakened Wellness. I am your host, Dr. Milan Rayobe, and we are talking about the five critical questions that are very simple to answer. Uh, That will take all the mystery out of your fatigue and burnout. Uh, So uh, I think we had some questions come in. Fatigue a disease eye-opener. Yeah, Chinese medicine considers what we would call symptoms to be diseases because it's a dis-ease. You know, Um, by the time we get what we call diseases, you know, that's a big deal. Um, And it's kind of beyond the point of being successfully treated, you know, if we wait for what we call a disease in our mainstream model. So they call things like headaches, fatigue, uh, they call them diseases, because if you think about what a disease is, they are diseases, right? And, And they should not be ignored. That's another reason I think it's so important to call them diseases is because it it really hammers in that we can't ignore these symptoms. We just keep brushing them off in our mainstream model, you know, and and we just can't do it. And we don't brush it off because we're callous and we don't care. We brush it off because we're not trained about what to do. Uh, And so it, 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 it's the slippery slope, right? Where we get disconnected with our, with our patients because we just don't know what to do for them. And Chinese medicine fills that gap in so well. So thank you for that. that that's a, a, a fantastic observation because it's an important one. Um, question one, I'm hot flashing more times than I can count. Should I consider myself warm? Yes. Um, now, if you if you have times when you consider yourself cold, if you have chills too, you could be both. You could be hot and cold, which can happen. Um, and we'll talk about mixed types as well. 
Um, but if you're also very thirsty all the time, you know, and even when you're not having a hot flash, if you just feel warm all the time, and again, you can kind of take your temperature first thing in the morning, just make sure you're not in the middle of a hot flash, right? If you're in the middle of a hot flash, you'll have these, you know, wild temperature swings of up to six degrees. Um, so, uh, don't take your temperature then, but you can take your temperature first thing in the morning. And if you're like 99 ish, you know, uh, then you're hot. Yeah, definitely. Question two, I wake with energy, yet my body doesn't seem as flexible as when I went to bed. After coffee, I'm ready to run. Yep. So, you know, you want to rate that, right? So on, on one to 10, what would you rate that energy? Would you rate it a seven? Would you rate it a six? Um, would you rate it a nine? You know, uh, and your body doesn't seem as flexible, right? So sometimes what happens is we have a little inflammation when we wake up that when we move around, we force that inflammation to move out of the way. And so we feel better. So it's important to know, does my energy actually go up when I move? Um, and if it goes up when you move, then you know that you are an excessive type. Um, if it starts to go down, you know, as you start moving through your day, you know, if you woke up feeling good and then it's just doing this through, you know, pretty much the whole day, then you know that you are deficient. Um, question, can I find these questions on your website? I'm getting behind on the questions. I want to spend more time working on it. We are actually developing a questionnaire. Um, yes, so they will be, they are not yet, but um, awakenedwellnessnow.com. Uh, we will be posting these questionnaires um, on our site. So we hammer them out in our course, our online course for sure. Um, but it's really, uh, it's fun actually to work through these because what happens for my patients is they get excited because they're like, oh, I'm going to actually be able to fix, you know, what's going on. And these are the questions I've asked in the past to help my clients to beat their fatigue. So I know they work, um, but what's really exciting is, is they work from your home instead of having to schlep to my office for me to look at your tongue and feel your pulses. You can kind of hammer out what, what that's going to look like. So um, we will uh, have it on our website. Um, Hopefully by, let me see, by the end of, mm, let's say, by the next live podcast next Wednesday, they should be up. Um, question, question five hit me in the face. Uh, at work, when coffee break finally arrives, I find my legs and body just don't want to move. Yeah, so it's important to ask yourself, if I move, do I feel better? If you, if you don't actually feel better when you move, if you get up and you're moving around, but you don't feel a lot better, and then you go sit at your desk again and you're fighting to make it through the rest of your day, that's a deficient type. If you get up and you move around and you feel better and you're ready to go for the rest of the day, that's an excessive type, right? So if you feel better when you move, that says there was something there that was in the way that you needed to move out of the way, if that makes sense. If you feel worse when you move, that means you didn't have enough energy to begin with. Now you expended more energy. And so now your body's in an even bigger deficit and you're gonna feel worse. So that's a deficient type. So um, next question, when are you starting your online course? Um, we, we have actually uh, launched, we're doing a very soft launch because What's happening is I'm finding easier and easier ways to explain these things as I've been talking about it more and more. Uh, and so um, I keep revamping the course uh, and making it even simpler and better. Uh, and so I keep halting it and starting it, but I think we're, we've pretty much hammered it out now. So uh, we should be ready for, for launch. So if you go to awakenedwellnessnow.com, uh, you can watch the introductory uh, videos. You can book a call with our team. We can talk to you more specifically about the course, the benefits of doing the course, the anticipated results, um, and you can make a decision if you want to be part of the Wellness Warrior Tribe. So uh, thanks. That's a great question and statement. I've learned so much watching you on YouTube. Bless you for your wisdom and your willingness to share with us. Well, thank you. And, and thank you so much. Um, it's a, it's a privilege really. Um, it's incredible how the, uh, internet, the online platform, uh, has just allowed information to spread. So 
my vision is to help people with information overload, right? So these five questions help you avoid information overload. They also help you avoid doing things that aren't going to work for your metabolic type. Uh, and that's what the purpose of the course is. It's, it's a nine week course. So we're not even going to come close to really diving as deeply as we need to today. Um, but it's a nine week course where we really hammer out what your metabolic type actually means. Should you, should you do intermittent fasting or not, right? If you are a deficient type, should not do intermittent fasting, right? If you are an excessive type, then yeah, intermittent fasting is probably for you. Um, you know, and you should repeat these questions periodically because your body is dynamic. It's constantly shifting, right? So if you're doing things in response to these questions, your body will change because that's the point. And so you'll want to ask yourself these questions periodically, maybe once a quarter and see, am I still the same metabolic type or have I shifted to another one? If you've shifted to a different one, then there's a whole other, you know, set of parameters for that, that metabolic type, right? So you might be good for intermittent fasting for like a year and then you've, that's run its course and you shouldn't continue to fast or you're going to become deficient right? Because Chinese medicine teaches us this very clearly is that any restrictive diet will do you in eventually, you know? So it may be great for you in the beginning because it suits you and it's exactly what you need at that time. But because it's restrictive and because there are things you're taking out of the diet on purpose to achieve a very specific goal, once you've achieved that goal, if you keep doing that restrictive thing, you're gonna go off into a different type of imbalance and you're gonna have a whole set of other problems. We see this with vegans, particular, uh, particularly with female vegans. We're not really well designed to be vegans for very long. Um, and so there comes a point where being a vegan is great, right? We get rid of all the inflammation. If we're too hot, veganism will cool us down, right? So veganism is kind of an alkaline cooling diet, which we'll teach in the online course. So we'll teach you like, what does it mean if I'm too hot? What does it mean if I'm too cold? If you're too hot, what it kind of means is that you're too acidic. So acidity is a hot energy um, in, in, uh, in our mainstream model too, it produces heat uh, in the body. Um, and so that's not healthy, right? If you're too acidic. So we combat acidity with alkalinity, right? So you do the opposite of what you are to get yourself back into balance. So if you're too hot, you need to cool yourself down. And cooling foods tend to be raw, uh, you know, green leafy vegetables and things that have very high water content, cucumbers, celery, lettuce, things that have a lot of water in them, lemons. Um, those things tend to be very alkaline and they will combat acidity. Now, there is such a thing as being too alkaline, which I know people will say there's no such thing as being too alkaline. There actually is such a thing. Um, you know, again, Chinese medicine is all about balance. Um, it may not be common to be overly alkaline, but it's not normal to be overly alkaline. So those are the people that are a little bit too cold. If you're the one that's constantly cold, the last thing you want to do is you know, do a lot of raw vegetables, which is what vegans tend to do. You can still be vegan, but you would have to cook the vegetables. You'd have to make them a little spicier so that you could warm them up so they wouldn't make you colder, if that makes sense. So we see even veganism, you know, it's touted to be a very healthy diet. And it's not that it isn't healthy, but you have to know your metabolic type to know if it's going to suit you. So I've had vegans come into my office, like, you know, just exhausted, feeling horrible, in pain, and they thought they were doing, you know, something really good for their health. And it's not that they weren't, right? Veganism is not by itself a bad diet. It's also not by itself a good diet. It depends on who's doing the diet. So you have to be of a hot metabolic type for veganism to work for you long term. If you're already too cold and you become a vegan, you're going to run into trouble at some point. Uh, and so even if you are hot, and you do a vegan diet, at some point, you're not gonna be that hot anymore, right? At some point, your body temperature will normalize. You won't feel so hot. Now, if you keep doing a cooling or alkaline diet, you're gonna start getting too cold, right? And Chinese medicine's about balance, right? It, 
there there's this thing called, you know, too much of a good thing becomes a bad thing, right? So estrogen is a great example, right? If you don't have any estrogen, you're going to run into problems. If you have too much estrogen, you're going to run into problems, right? So there's this balance with estrogen. You don't want too much of it. You don't want too little of it. You just want that Goldilocks zone of your estrogen. It's the same for everything. Thyroid, right? If we have too much thyroid, problem, too little thyroid problem, right? We have to be in that Goldilocks zone to have balance. And that's what Chinese medicine teaches us, right? You know, we, we have this tendency in our allopathic model to rate things as good or bad, um, but nothing is good or bad. It depends on who's experiencing, you know, the, this thing. And so if you're cold and you become a vegan, you might run into trouble. If you're hot and you become a vegan, you'll think it's the best diet ever right? Um, until your temperature normalizes, and then you're going to start feeling some early signs that there's a problem. So you want to repeat these questions periodically. What happens when we begin to realize that the 200-year experiment we've called the American healthcare system has failed? Learn how spirituality, ancient traditions, and cutting-edge science are merging to create a new paradigm of wellness on Awakened Wellness with Milen Riobay, MD. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. Eastern Time with live video shows every first and third Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern when you can call in and ask Dr. Milin the questions that matter most to you. Dr. Milin is the medical director of the Rio Bay Institute of Integrative Medicine in Jupiter, Florida. For more information, visit RIOBEintegrativemedicine.com. Dream Vision 7 Radio Network invites you in for this dynamic, forward thinking show. Edesia is a U.S. nonprofit dedicated to the dream of ending childhood malnutrition for millions of children around the world. Through the manufacture of Plumpy Nut and other nutrient-rich, peanut-based, ready-to-use foods, Edesia has already delivered life and hope to nearly 1 million children in over 26 developing countries. To find out how you can join Edesia's dream of ending childhood malnutrition, please visit ediciaglobal.org. What if dreams can diagnose your life? What if we can meet the love of our life in dreams? Join host Cat O'Keefe Cannabis, the number one internationally best-selling author of Dreams That Can Save Your Life, written with Duke University medical doctor Larry Burke. Dreaming Healing is where we'll explore dreams, research, and interpret dreams from you, the caller. Dreaming Healing shows can be heard every Tuesday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern with live shows on the first and third evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 radio network. Come live your dreams out loud with Kat. Are you searching for a way to help create global change? Dream Vision 7 radio network's vision is to have an eclectic group of radio hosts dedicated to educating, enlightening, and helping humankind with positive messages and tools that enhance lives using different modalities and programs. If you would like to join our team and help illuminate the universe, call Deborah at 508-226-1723 or Deborah at DreamVision7Radio.com. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. Question, alkaline water, would this help me lower my heat? Yes. Um, now, it's, it's better to do that, I think, naturally. Um, lemon water, cucumber water, um, greens, juices, and drinks uh, will cool you down. Uh, they're very cooling. Tropical fruits are also very cooling, but they're loaded with sugar. So watermelon, uh, pineapple, um, nature is really brilliant, right? So the things that grow in hot environments tend to be cooling. Uh, so in the tropics, when we're so close to the equator and it's really hot, the foods that we find naturally to be there tend to cool us down, right? So nature had its own built-in air conditioners, <laughs> you know, with our food, um, you know, that it just built into itself. Same thing with, with uh, climates where things are too cold. So 
elk, bison, you know, deer that grow in the higher latitudes further away from the equator are very hot. You know, so if you're really cold and you need to warm yourself up, venison, elk, bison, uh, gamey meats are very hot. So they'll, they'll warm you up. And this is where we went into trouble with red meats, right? Um, red meats are hot, so they induce acidity in people. Um, so if you're too cold, that's fine. But if you're too hot, it's, that's a problem, right? So if you're already too acidic and you go and you eat a bunch of acidic food, obviously you're going to be adding to your problems. And this is where meat gets its bad, re bad reputation. Uh, you know, and, and vast majority of Americans, our diet is very acidic anyway, you know. And so, again, you want to know, am I, am I already too hot or am I cold? And so some of my clients, I ask them to eat more meat because they're too cold, you know. Now, if they're vegans, we always respect that. We never ask anyone to go against, you know, their, their principles, their beliefs, you know, we always work with them regardless, but you need to, you know, so you can also warm up through spices. You can also warm up through activities that you do, which we'll talk about. Um, so spices, cayenne pepper is about as hot as you get, you know, so, but if you're already too hot and you do cayenne pepper, you're going to have problems, right? Um, so that's for people who are on the colder side, you know, so uh, you want to be, you want to learn like, am I too hot or am I too cold? And what are the food groups that I want to eat that will balance me? So this is all about balance. Um, so these are phenomenal questions. Um, question, I don't want to participate in killing animals. Couldn't I just use a plant-based protein? To Plants are not as warming, but again, you can spice them up and you can cool them. I mean, I'm sorry, you can cook them. So plants by themselves tend to be cooling just, just by their nature or neutral. Um, and so uh, particularly tropical plants will be more cooling. Um, but yes, you can warm them up by adding spices to them. You can warm them up by cooking them longer. So in Chinese medicine, there are these soups that they make for like 24 hours for people that are cold. Um, and so uh, in our uh, mainstream model, in our Western thinking, we say, well, don't cook your vegetables because you're going to cook all the nutrition out of it. Um, but that's because we don't eat the broth, right? You have to eat the broth and then you, the nutrition will still be there when you eat it, right? So you don't want to throw away the broth. You want to eat the entire thing, uh, the vegetables and the broth so that you get the full nutritional value. Um, so you can definitely get protein from plants, for sure. You can get proteins from legumes, even like quinoa will have protein in it, tempeh, um, so all types of different uh, non-animal. And today we have, you know, uh, all of the uh, vegan meat substitutes, although I still haven't found one that doesn't taste like cardboard. So if anyone knows of any, let me know. Um, you know, we've tried several and uh, I just can't get past the, the taste. Um, and the consistency, but I know as, as uh, you know, just like gluten used to be, you couldn't A, find gluten-free options, and when you found them, they were awful. So now fast forward, they taste pretty good, and they're all over the place, right? So I'm sure we'll see the same evolution with plant-based, um, you know, meat substitutes, um, but absolutely you can. But if you're of cold type, you have to warm those plants up somehow, right? If you're of hot type, then go to town, eat them uh, raw all you want until your temperature normalizes, then you wanna start to even things out. So um, these are great questions. So metabolic types, what do they mean, right? So if you rated yourself as cold deficient, right? So cold deficient would be I'm the one that feels cold all the time compared to all my friends. My temperature is like 97. You know, um, whenever I go to the doctor, they tell me my temperature is too low. That's cold. Um, and then you rated yourself low in the morning, you know, somewhere between one and five. And then that number dropped as the day went by. And you're also that person that does not feel great after you exercise, or you may not exercise at all because you're too tired, right? These are deficient signs of deficiency. So you would rate yourself as cold deficient. 
So what does that mean in terms of diet? We just talked about that a little bit, right? So you have to warm up your food. If you're too cold, you have to warm yourself up. The goal is to have a normal body temperature, right? 98.6, give or take a couple tenths of a degree. Um, and you don't want to feel cold, just like you don't want to feel hot. You just want to feel normal, right? Um, and when I say normal, I don't mean normal for you. I mean normal, 98.6. Um, and, and so in terms of nutrition, cold deficient, you're going to have trouble digesting your food because the stomach does not like to be cold. So if you're cold all the time, and your body temperature is too low, you're gonna struggle to digest your food. So you might be interested in taking some digestive enzymes. You might wanna be the one that drinks a hot tea in the morning just to raise your temperature, a hot cinnamon tea with a little bit of honey, something like that to raise your temperature. You wanna make sure your food is always warm, cooked. You want to avoid a lot of raw food because you want to optimize your digestion. Uh, and also small frequent meals are very helpful for cold deficient types because we know you're not going to absorb very well. Um, and then as your temperature comes up, now your stomach's going to work better. Your pancreas is going to work better. You're going to have enough acid in your stomach to digest your food. You're going to release enough enzymes to digest your food and absorb your food. Small frequent meals are going to be your best friend. And by frequent, I mean roughly every three-ish hours, which again, we hammer this out in the course. I'm just giving you a quick outline here today. Uh, in terms of exercise, so you do not want to do aggressive, high-intensity uh, types of exercises because you're deficient, right? So you don't want to dig into energy you don't have because your body is just going to start shutting off more and more important functions and you're going to get sick or you're going to get injured. So you're going to be that person that if you get injured, it's really hard for you to recover, right? That, that injury takes forever to get better. Um, and so you know that you're deficient when that's your story. So you want to be very restorative with your exercise. So you're the one that wants to do things that are more like walking meditations, moving meditation. So yin yoga, for example, or tai chi, qigong very careful strength training after stretching and warming up, right? So it's extremely important to warm up before you exercise and stretch if you're too cold, because when you're too cold, things contract, right? Your blood vessels get smaller. You don't have good circulation. So you have to warm yourself up to open the blood vessels up uh, so that your muscles and joints and things will be properly, you know, uh, nourished for you to exercise. Otherwise, you're going to injure yourself or increase the risk of injury. Uh, so you don't want to do aggressive things. So I know, you know, these days, high intensity interval training is really popular. P90X was popular a while ago. Um, you know, uh, things that are very aggressive uh, are very popular, but you want to be very careful if you're cold deficient. Um, detoxification for cold deficient. So people who are deficient want to be extremely careful with detoxing and cleanses um, because cleanses and detoxes are draining. And so uh, in other words, they use up a lot of energy. So when something's draining, it's letting out energy. It's uh, um, releasing energy. So if you're already deficient, you don't want to release energy. You want to get energy. So I tell my clients who are deficient, you want to steal energy from wherever you can get it. The sun, the earth, um, you know, uh, restorative activities, breath work, meditation, very important for deficient types, very important for everyone, but in particular deficient types um, so that you can restore. You want to bring energy into the body, not lose it through detoxification. So the best way for a cold deficient person to detox is by doing things like warm soups and broths that have a lot of vegetables in it so that you're getting all the things that you would buy in a box that comes in a detox kit, but you're getting it from whole food. The benefit of the whole food is that you have nutrition mixed with the things that are going to help you to cleanse out your cells. The body has built-in detox mechanisms within itself, and it doesn't need to be cleansed unless you have excessive metabolic type. Um, so 
you want to arm your own body to detox you by itself. You don't want to add a bunch of, you know, cleanses. You definitely don't want to be doing a lot of things like colonics and um, those types of strategies if you're cold deficient, or even if you're hot deficient. So hot and cold deficient, same exercise recommendations um, and detoxification rec recommendations as well. Sleep and rest. For deficient uh, clients, for metabolic types that are deficient, um, you need a lot of rest, obviously. Um, and when you rest really matters, especially if you're deficient. So you, it's critically important to be in bed by 10 uh, so that you are sleeping between 10 and 2 in the morning because that's when uh, you make a lot of your feel-good hormones. It's also when you make blood. It's also uh, when you start to actually cleanse the body. So the body's own natural detoxification occurs at night when we're sleeping. So if we don't get enough sleep, we don't detox. And if you're deficient, you need extra sleep to make sure that that happens. So I'll tell my deficient clients, please get nine hours of sleep consistently and make sure that you're at least close to 10 o'clock going down to go to bed. Uh, if you do not do that, you keep going through this vicious uh, circle where you just don't feel better. Um, the other important thing is mid-afternoon rest. So I tell people if you can't take a flat out power nap in the afternoon and between one and three o'clock in the afternoon is the best time, it's just like a 15 minute power nap. Um, if you can't do that, lay with your feet or lay flat, sorry, with your feet up above your heart. What that does is that brings all the blood back to your core. Uh, so if you're deficient, you don't want to leave your blood out in the extremities. You want to have it come back to your core so it can get replenished and reoxygenated um, through the core of your body. And so even if you just do that for 10 minutes uh, consistently, you'll find that your fatigue starts to lift because what you're doing is you're restoring yourself in the middle of the day. So you want to restore yourself at night, and then you want to restore yourself in the middle of the day. Uh, if you're deficient, either hot or cold. Now, if you are hot metabolic type, you want to cool yourself down. So we talked about that. So if you are um, hot deficient, you still want to have the small frequent meals because you're deficient. Um, but if you're too hot, what you want to do is you want to have an alkaline, lots of plants, lots of leafy vegetables, and also fill in your protein so that you're getting enough protein. And again, we talk about this in great detail in our course. I'm just giving you, again, a quick overview. Um, so you want to get enough protein, which we'll talk about what that means uh, in our course. Um, but deficient means small, frequent meals, whether it's hot or cold, right? Whether you are hot or cold. Uh, what changes is what you're eating in small, frequent meals. Uh, so if you are hot, it's a lot of alkaline stuff, right? If I'm you're afraid we're out of time, stuff. doctor. Oh, we're out of time already. Okay. Well, that's all right. So we're going to continue next week and talk about more. So, um, so we talked about our deficient types today. On our next podcast, we'll talk about the two excessive metabolic types and go a little bit more into detail on those. So that's all the time we have. So stay tuned next week when we talk a little more about this. I'm your host, Dr. Milan Reobe. Thank you so much for listening and watching today. And until next time, many blessings. Join us next time on Awakened Wellness with Milen Riobe, MD, to learn how spirituality, ancient traditions, and cutting-edge science are merging to create a new paradigm of wellness. Awakened Wellness airs every Wednesday at 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. Eastern Time with live video shows every first and third Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern of each month. Meanwhile, you can join our Facebook page at facebook.com slash awakened wellness and let us know what you'd like to discuss on future episodes. Dr. Milin is the medical director of the Rio Bay Institute of Integrative Medicine in Jupiter, Florida. For more information, visit riobayintegrativemedicine.com. This show is part of the Dream Vision 7 radio network. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. 
Let life flow.